I'm Kristen and I'm with Decorators Warehouse. Thank you for joining us today as we create this beautiful platinum themed Christmas tree for your home. Now we realize that Christmas decor is not one size fits all. Um, we like a lot of decor on your trees, as you can see here. Um, if that is not your preference, we want you to take the techniques and ideas that are presented in this video and adapt them to your preferences. With that said, I'm gonna teach you today our four-step decorating process. The four steps include the tree topper, followed by the ribbon, the florals and sprays, and last but not least, the ornaments. So come along, let's get started. Step one of our four step process is gonna to be to create a beautiful tree topper. Um, so I have four stems that I've chosen. These are gonna be the same four stems that you'll see later on in the cluster. Um, and they consist of this beautiful platinum leaf. Um, when you're choosing pieces for your topper, you wanna to look for pieces with height, and you also wanna look for different textures. So I've also chosen this gorgeous berry that will lay on top. And then kind of at the base of the topper, we're gonna um, include some beautiful florals as well. So for this nine foot tree, I'm gonna use three groupings of this. And like I said, this is gonna be the same floral cluster that we'll use later on. Um, for a smaller tree, like a six and a half or seven and a half, you're gonna do two of these groupings, or you're gonna do five for a 12 foot tree. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my tallest stem and I'm gonna run it straight down along the pole. Okay, and I can use some of the greenery branches to kind of secure that in place. And then pull some of the leaves out. And then I'll come in with my berry. And same thing, I always wanna run straight down the pole. And I will repeat this process on each side. The second step of my four step process is gonna be the ribbon. And I think ribbon adds so much to any Christmas tree. Today I've chosen three styles. The first one I have is this beautiful metallic paisley, which is gonna go great with this platinum design. And I'm going to be layering it over this um, gorgeous open weave, which just creates a great texture in the tree. And then I have one more style um, that I'm gonna save until the end, and I'm gonna add this in as an accent ribbon. Today I'm decorating a nine foot tree. I'm gonna be using three rolls of each in the body. For a smaller tree, um, say seven and a half, I would use two. Now, if your tree is really full um, and you decorate the full view, then I would maybe be on the conservative side and, and grab one more roll. Um, but three is great for this one. On a 12 foot tree, I would go ahead and use five rolls, five to six. So I'm gonna start by layering these two. I'm going to pinch them together, creating a tail. So my tail's gonna be about eight inches. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a simple two-loop bow right here at the base of the topper. And if you haven't done bows before, they do take a little bit of practice, but they're, they're pretty simple and we do have some great videos to help you um, learn how to do bows. But I'm gonna leave a loop and then you are gonna come in and you're gonna twist the ribbon. And basically what that does, it brings the pretty side of the ribbon back to the front. And then I'm gonna create one more loop. Making sure they're the same size. And then again, I'm gonna to twist to get that front side forward. And then we're gonna come in at the base and we're gonna secure it with a branch. And then you can open your bow up, fluff the loops. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna cut that tail at a diagonal. Just a nice little decorative touch. And then I'm going to immediately come in with a larger loop. So what we're going to be doing with the ribbon is we're going to be making series of two larger loops. Um, now sometimes you might see me add in a small decorative detail or maybe even a bow at the end of the two loop run, but every run will have at least two larger loops. So I've got it pinched. See, I've got about probably, oh, I'd say about 24 inches. I'm gonna use the branch to tie it around. That'll hold it in place. And I'm gonna refrain from making this too tight. 
tight. We don't want it to look stretched, but rather we want open, loose loops. Okay, now instead of starting my next loop directly underneath it, I'm gonna pull it to the side and create another loop. And cutting with a tail, leaving a tail and cutting. Since my first series of loops is kind of on this side of the tree, I'm actually gonna come in with my next series of two loops. I'm gonna offset it a little bit. So I'm gonna start in about the middle of that area and then I'm gonna come down this way. I'm gonna add in that smaller decorative loop here. And as you can see, this one includes two loops and then I'm actually ending with a little two loop bow. Um, so all of my, my different runs um, are kind of organic and they're different too. So some just have two loops, you know, some have two loops in a, a loop in the middle um, or like this one, which has two big loops and a small bow. Just to recap, we did um, step one, which was our tree topper going into step two, which is our ribbon. Um, step three is our floral and spray layer. And so I'm gonna tell you about a technique we use a lot in the store, it's called floral clustering. Um, and basically what that is, it's using a combination of flowers and sprays um, grouped together to take up big areas of your tree. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna be using the same four stems that we used in our topper, two sprays and two flowers. Um, and we are going to start with the sprays. We're gonna lay them on top of each other. And then we're just gonna marry them a little bit. So bring some forward, some back. Basically so it looks um, continuous. And then we're gonna come in with our two flowers. We wanna angle the head up a little bit and to the side a little bit like that. So one kind of in this location and one off to the other side. Then holding all the stems together, we're going to take one and we're going to wrap it around all of them. Okay, and then you can just kind of pull it back out to get the placement you want. Now, because these stems are so long and I don't want them to pop out the other side of the tree, I'm actually going to bend that in half. And then we're going to insert these as one big piece all throughout the tree. So on this nine foot tree, um, I'm using nine sprays in the body of the tree. Um, kind of one per foot is a good rule of thumb. So if you have a seven and a half foot tree, use seven throughout the body of your tree. Um, and then when you get into a 12 foot, I know your base gets quite a bit bigger. So I would say, you know, anywhere from 12 to 18 stems. Now, of course, if you have a very full tree, always go on the higher end. Um, and possibly even add more. Um, now, in addition to the floral clusters that I'm gonna do on this layer, I'm actually going to include a larger single stem. So these I'm just gonna place by themselves. And then I have three sprays. So this gorgeous iced gold berry, this kind of silver with the platinum glitter berry, and then this one that pulls them both together. I love this piece because of the texture it adds into the tree. So all of these are gonna be placed um, individually after I do my clusters. When I place the cluster, I'm basically running the stem along the branch and then using the greenery branches to wrap around and hold it in place. And we are gonna zigzag through the tree. So if my first one is over here, my second one's gonna be more in this area, going down in a diagonal pattern. So as you can see, all of my floral clusters are placed. They're just great ways to fill in big chunks of your tree and bring the whole design together. Um, so now I'm gonna come in with this larger floral. Um, I just love this, it's a little darker to bring in some depth. And again, I'm kind of alternating in the opposite direction now. So since I have a cluster here, 
My first stem will go in there and again, kind of zigzagging throughout the tree. Sprays are a great way to layer your tree over time, um, simply because you can start small with one style or two styles, and then the following year, if you stick to the same theme, um, you could pick out another style and then maybe add you know, a dozen of that um, to really just bring your tree to life over time. Um, but on this nine foot tree, this is kind of a mid-size nine. I'm using about nine of each of these, um, but you could definitely do dozens as well. One other thing I'm doing too, because I'm not sure if you can see it real well, but I am sliding the stem along the greenery and then I'm using the branches, just twisting it around to hold it in place. And then actually pull these out um, just to create that texture. I'm just gonna fluff them out, pulling the branches out to give it great dimension, um, and then I'll place them in that same diagonal formation. Okay, the fourth step of our four step process is adding the ornaments. And one thing that I include in pretty much every tree design that I do um, is shatterproof balls. They're just great fillers. Um, these go tucked you know, deeper into the tree um, to conceal any holes that are still left and to create that depth. And then I also like to include a few other textures as well. So I have about four styles of balls that are gonna go onto this tree. Um, along with a few other specialty ones that I will do um, closer to the outside of the branches. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the shatterproof balls now. Um, I actually do not use the ornament hangers on these. Um, because they're so big, I can actually just kind of stuff them into the tree and they're going pretty far deep into the branches. All right, all of the balls are placed on my tree. I have a lot of depth going on on the inside. And now I'm gonna come in with a few different shapes, um, the more specialized ornaments, and I'm gonna hang them on the outsides of the branches to put the finishing details on the tree. And same thing, rather than letting them hang long, I'm gonna wrap it around the branch to maintain that control. Okay, well those are our four steps. Um, and as you remember, during the ribbon layer, we held on to one roll of ribbon that was gonna be an accent ribbon um, for the end. And the reason I hold on to this until the end is um, I like to see my fully loaded tree um, look for anywhere that there's holes or spaces, and then I'm gonna fill in with this ribbon. Um, and for this step, I do one of three things. You can do a simple tail I call these bow ties actually, where you leave about eight inches on each side. You can do that one loop bow. So you start with the tail again, do a loop, a twist, and then you cut. Or we can add one more loop to make a two loop bow, okay? So any one of those three things, um, just kind of depending on the space and how big it is. So I'll start actually with this little two loop bow 
And I'm gonna just come in here, since I still see a little hold there, twist it in. Now I'm gonna cut that little fishtail um, decorative detail, so I'm folding it in half and cutting at an angle. And do the same for this tail as well. And now I'm just gonna go around the tree. I'm gonna look for anywhere with holes and do one of those three accents. All right, we hope that you found this helpful and that you are now equipped and ready to take the techniques presented here today and try them out on your very own Christmas tree at home. These techniques can be adapted to any style, whether you're, you like a whimsical tree, rustic decor, or something elegant and traditional as we did here today. Um, we are on Facebook, it's Decorators Warehouse, um, as well as Instagram and of course, YouTube. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe. Well, thank you for joining us and Merry Christmas.